everyone, and welcome back. About an hour ago I left the tent, and now I'm heading to the farmhouse. It's time to get that tile finished. Right now I'm in the cell phone dead zone, and uh, just prior to that I was messaging with Melissa about going out to eat for lunch, because it'll be just about lunchtime when I get uh, close to the farmhouse. So uh, once I get out of here, I might be going to lunch with her, and then of course I'll head to the farmhouse. Melissa and I are not going to do lunch. She's in at work, and I it would take me an additional 35-40 minutes to drive to her work from here. So I am going to stop off at the post office, though. I think it's time that I set up a post office box, a PO box for Northern Seclusion. I'm going to try to do that right now. Northern Seclusion officially has a P.O. Box. It's Northern Seclusion, P.O. Box 750, Cloquet, Minnesota. And what is the zip code here? 55720. figure out a way to put that on the Northern Seclusion YouTube page, so it's always there. Well, it's a quarter after 12 and I am hungry, so I'm going to go inside and have some lunch before I do anything. Leftovers from the tent. I'm just marking this now so I know where I can't stand tonight. 
I already was over here working on this and put my knee on this one and it pushed the mud up and I had to clean it out of the the seam right here. I'm gonna feel like I was doing push-ups all day tomorrow when I wake up from just having to lean over like this. Last Monday, I, uh, you know, I mean, I do construction work all the time, but this uses muscles that I'm not used to, to using. I had to, my forearm right here was so sore last night, probably from running the trowel and from the big drill with the mixer in it that uh, there were times during the day when I had to reach down. I could push the skill saw fine, but um, I had to reach down with both hands to pick it up off the ground. It was such a wimp. Now well, it's a little bit after six o'clock. Melissa just got home from work. Last week when I was done, I was running late on time, so I just uh, filled this bucket with water. Uh, don't do that. <laughs> Everything is completely solid in there. You're not saving the bucket. I need a clean bucket for grout though, so I have to clean this one or I would just throw this out and just buy another $2 bucket.
tomorrow is supposed to be nice like today, and then Sunday it's supposed to, in the afternoon or night, it's supposed to rain. If I have a chance, I'll get out there and I'll finish mowing that back pasture. I really wanted to get that one done before the snow flies. May as well pull some of these out tonight because no matter when you do it, it sucks. Good morning everybody. I've just been uh, doing a few things off camera at the house and uh, right now I'm just running up to L&M here because I need to get a few things. Eventually we'll get that tile done and if it doesn't rain this morning there's a small chance if things stay dry. I want to get back out into that pasture and do some more mowing. They didn't have what I needed in Cloquet so now I have to drive into Duluth. Lunchtime. Partially homemade pizza. <laughs> well, it's late afternoon right now. I had some projects that I was doing that I wasn't filming and uh, didn't expect that to take most of the day, which it really didn't. But then I started thinking we have those skunks that keep showing up. Uh, I don't know if they've been there lately, but for the cat food and stuff. And my worry was, since Joni got sprayed, I could come into the workshop once in a while and I could smell skunk. And as you know, this is an old dairy barn, so it has the uh, troughed area here where the chains would, and the, whatever, the little paddles would pull the manure outside years ago. You can see right here, there's one of the corner pulleys. Well, all this is covered up with uh, plywood, and I thought, what a perfect place for a skunk to come in here, and what I don't want is skunks hibernate. I did not want any skunks hibernating underneath the workshop because I'm going to heat it up in here in the wintertime sometimes, and they're going to wake up. And these troughs, you know, they come to this back part of the barn, they wrap around, and you can see where the plywood it goes right outside, right there. And there is a grate out there, but I haven't, had, I haven't had time to do anything with this yet, to go out there and make sure that's sealed off. I, I don't even care right now, I just, uh, there's too many other things to do. About three weeks ago I came in here and I blocked that off right there. And I didn't realize, it is right down tight against uh, concrete, and I didn't know it was concrete at the time, so nothing could have got in there. So I was glad about that. I, I opened it up today and, and put it in better and got it screwed in real tight. And then I, I, that, that was on the other side. Then I come in here and I pull this first piece of plywood. I'm going to make sure that there's no skunks underneath here. So I pull the first piece of plywood. There's nothing. And I look at this though and it's like, man, that looks like, doesn't look like 30 year old grass or anything. So something's been in there. I grab the second piece, I get it about two feet in the air, and there's a skunk sitting right here in that little indent. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. I dumped the plywood, and uh, then I just, it, I see there was a, a crack between the two pieces of plywood once I dropped it, and I could see he kind of went that way. So then I'm scratching my head, what am I going to do? But I, since I knew that that was blocked off good, I knew that it had to have been able to get all the way around and out the back side because there's no way that a skunk would sit underneath here for three weeks and be alive with no water or no food. 
So I just kept pulling these out and for a while, Melissa was out here with me and you could hear it underneath this part. And I just kept moving away, you know, down the line here and got these lifted up so I knew that it was clear. And then all I have to do for right now is get this far because that's where this blocks off. I can block it off and then go into this room and move stuff around and keep pulling the plywood until it gets out. So I'm blocking this one off right now, but I can still look underneath there and see the skunk. He's about, or she, is right about in there. And when I opened it up, it uh, actually started coming back this way because it could see light. So anyway, I'm gonna get this blocked off right now and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna grab the camera because this story is worth telling. Well, I'm looking underneath here now and it's no longer there. So it must have made its way, hopefully outside. Now he's over here on this side. Bet you you guys can see him. Hold on. I think you guys can see that. He needs to get out of here. I think it's just the one. He's a big one. Well, Melissa and I, it's like two hours later from when I filmed last, and now I've got everything shut up in the barn, including this back door, and everything is blocked off except for, I pulled this grate out of here. Oh, it stinks like skunk so bad here. You see that little uh, opening, that trough goes about 16 feet, and they're all, there's like two or three of them, and they're all up on the far side. Everything else is blocked out. I pulled these rocks out of here. They're no longer, you know, nice and uh, safe, I should say. The one of them came out and was running around in there, and uh, Joni was in there. It sprayed at Joni, and I don't think it hit Joni, but uh, it stinks so bad in there. And then I think that they sprayed again underneath because it's so strong in there, it makes your eyes water right now. But right now, I'm going to jump on the tractor. I want to mow that last little bit of the field right there. Um, it's just about, it'll be getting dark pretty soon and uh, I'd still have to grout that floor tonight. Just everything today was something else and something else and something else. I want to get some of the mowing done because before deer hunting, which is just a couple weeks away, I want to get the mower off of here and put the chain on and just be done and ready for winter. At least I got to finish that middle part of the field. I wanted to do that for weeks. 
even right here, it smells like skunk so bad that your eyes almost water. It's that bad. Let's get inside and do that grout. Melissa is in taking a shower because she said that she can just smell the skunk on her just from being in that room for so long. I can smell it on me too. So the first thing I'm going to do is mix this up and uh, the directions say between 18 and 22 ounces of water. I'm going with 20. I usually like my grout to be a little bit wetter. It's easier to put in, I think. Um, I'm going to be using, this is not a, I'm, I'm using in what I call an epoxy grout. It's um, like twice as expensive as regular grout, but I will never have to seal the grout. Normally, if, you know, with any of the sanded, uh, you have to seal the grout, and I will, I'll just never have to do it, which I like. And this stuff has a lot of play. It moves around some, so, which I'm happy about. The first thing I have to do is mix this for two minutes, then I have to wait for three to five minutes and then mix it for one more minute and then I'm good to go. The directions on this type of grout here say that after I grout it, I wait 20 to 30 minutes, then I can come back and do the come over it with a sponge. So basically, I would say by the time I get everything grouted, I'll be able to go back and start cleaning the first part. And uh, yeah, hopefully it'll go pretty quick here. I have my stopwatch on. That took 32 minutes. I've got to get down there and start uh, getting the sponge on those and getting them cleaned off. All the grouting is all done. Now I have to wait. I don't know how long until I go over this with a like a terry cloth or a fiber or whatever they're called because it's going to look horrible when it dries again but at least it doesn't look too bad you can see some of the grout got on the trim but it doesn't matter we're tearing all the trim out of here and we're going to either put a six or an eight inch tall uh, painted white again so i wasn't worried about that one bit because we're going to pull that out I just went over it again with the uh, terry cloth with the microfiber rags and I, I, I realized that when I grout I'm a dirty grouter <laughs> but with this one here I've never worked with epoxy uh, grout or whatever that's kind of what the guy called it at the store and for me I was thinking it's going to dry really fast so it was like hurry up and get it on and worry about the rest later so now I just have to go over it again here and kind of give it a polish but there's only, in really, no real imperfections. There was one little spot somewhere, like a dot, where I saw some white that came through. Like a little bit of a, uh, the mortar was too high, but, um, yeah, that's about it. Well, it's 9.30, and I'm going to jump in the shower.
Okay everyone, well it's straight up 11 o'clock. Melissa and I are going to bed and it still reeks like skunk out here. Good morning everybody. Just been hanging out inside with Melissa this morning. When I woke up it was 28 degrees outside. I'm not going to do a whole lot today. I need to get these boards unloaded and put into the workshop. It doesn't smell like skunk outside here anymore. We'll see what it's like inside the, uh, inside the workshop when I open up that door. Holy sh crap. Still stinks in there. Oh, Jesus. trying to figure out if we want to go with trim that's this high in the mudroom laundry room or this high so anyway I'm just cutting these I'll bring them in later and Melissa and I can check them out and see what she decides well the skunks have left that lower area I don't think that there's any way they can get back into this back part the way I had it blocked off, but I'm just checking to make sure. No, nope, that looks good and blocked off yet. That one does too, so all the good news is they're gone. Probably take a couple months before it doesn't stink in here anymore. This is right back where the skunk sprayed a little bit. It didn't get Joni, but I think it did get this heater right here. Well, I know that's not the 100% fix-all, but uh, nothing's getting it in there right now. And if anything tries, I'll easily be able to see that they were digging there. Next spring, once we get uh, it warms up, I'm going to pour concrete in that troughed area where it comes out and end the problem completely.
you come here and check this out? What size trim? I think the one on the right's too high. Okay. Can you show me how you're going to router it? I have to show you my bit. The bottom part will not be routered. This top part here will have a design in it. Okay. So I. We're going to have to get some onions too. Yeah, we're almost out, aren't we? Yep. We're going to have to uh, plant quadruple next year. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You got to say, how y'all doing? <laughs> Is that how the chef guy in Louisiana did it on TV? Yeah. The one from when we were kids. Now I, the, the name slips my mind. Justin Wilson. That one of those. Oh, I just went out and pulled the SD card out of that back pasture uh, trail camera. The one out in the field on the block, I pulled that one before I went to the tent and it didn't have anything worth looking at. I am going to replace that block with one that they like, so hopefully they'll start coming around on that one pretty soon. I think for Thanksgiving, your job will be to make the um, potatoes. Okay. Well, lunch was really good. I just come out and put the SD card into back into this camera right here. And I put a new block out here. They did nothing with this one, just like the last one. The, uh, this one right here now, that's that wild, what is it, irresistible wild berry. And they go crazy for that one. See if we get some pictures. The other trail camera, there were some pretty interesting, not a whole lot of deer, but interesting pictures. We had the skunk, the fox several times, a couple of deer pictures, but then there was a bobcat in there. And that was the first bobcat I've seen here. I had to look at that quite close, but definitely was. That was pretty cool. I may as well grab this one too so we're all up to date and 
Otherwise, I mean, it's like three weeks worth of pictures that I'm going through. I'll take a look at these, and it's just about time that I head south. Well, this one actually had some pretty decent pictures on it of deer. That one picture of the deer with the snow almost looked like a postcard, almost looked fake. That was pretty cool. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. I will see you guys on the next video.